days before the first day of Sukkot. Oh, shalom, little friends. How are you? Me! Shalom, little friends. We are very happy that you join us in this time before Sukkot. Me! Me! We are a few days away from the festivity of Sukkot, so we are about to prepare our Sukkah. That's right, Yossi. Let's begin. Me! We need these wooden bases. Also, these palm leaves and branches from leafy trees. Let's fix the fabric here. Ready! We finished our sukkah. It came out excellent. It's now ready so we can celebrate the festivity of Adonai. Me! 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 Perfect! It has come out excellent. Shalom, Yossi and Sharon. What are you doing? Shalom, Pastor Wolf. We were making our sukkah for the festivity of Sukkot. We're just finished with it. Ah, how nice. Like the one from last year. <coughs> yes, Pastor Wolf. And how good that you remember the festivity of the Eternal. But the truth is, I didn't have a good time with the cold, snakes, and much more. So this year, I'm going to make my house <coughs> to God next to yours. But wait, Pastor Wolf. A sukkah is not like a house. Yossi, can you explain what a sukkah is? Of course, Sharon. Let's see it alongside the little friends. What is a sukkah? Sukkah comes from the Hebrew, which means cabin, tabernacle, or camping tent. It was used in the time of Moses when they left Egypt because they were the tabernacles where the Israelites lived temporarily before they could reach the promised land and build their homes. Hmm. So, that's a sukkah, huh? Well, I prefer a thousand times my comfortable and warm bed. A few days later. Shalom again, little friends. How are you? Shalom, little friends. We are continuing this festive time in the seventh month of the Eternal's calendar. Shalom, Yossi and Sharon. I have a question. What are you doing in these months before Christmas? Is there a festivity before it? <coughs> Shalom, Pastor Wolf. Don't worry. We'll explain it to you. Also, Remember that we don't follow the Catholic holidays and that we are in the seventh month of the biblical calendar. Yes! The next holy appointment in the seventh month is called Sukkot, which means tabernacles. It's the last holy appointment and it's also called Hag, which is a festivity. The Eternal ordered to celebrate seven days with tabernacles to remember the time that the Israelites were in the desert. In addition, he ordered one more day in the closure of Sukkot after the seven days, known as Shemini Atzeret, which means Eighth of Convocation. This festivity begins from the 15th day of the seventh month, and the last day is a Holy Convocation and festive Shabbat. Sharon, do you remember years past how we celebrated? Me? Yes, you see. 
we are going to remember with our little friends from Cielos Nuevos Niños everything related to Sukkot. Hmm, how boring. I just want to have fun. If it's a party, there must be dancing and food, no? The Torah tells us. The commandment. In Leviticus chapter 23 verses 33 to 36 and 43 we read, Adonai spoke to Moses saying, Speak to B'nai Israel and say, On the fifteenth day of this seventh month is the feast of Sukkot. For seven days to Adonai, on the first day, there is to be a holy convocation. You are to do no laborious work. For seventh days, you are to bring an offering by fire to Adonai. The eighth day will be a holy convocation to you, and you are to bring an offering by fire to Adonai. It is a solemn assembly. You should do no laborious work so that your generations may know that I had B'nai Yisrael to dwell in Sukkot when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Adonai your Elohim. Sharon, the reality is that the Israelites came to fulfill the holy appointments and in some important years, they did it with great joy, as we read in Leviticus, but they did not know what they meant and what prophecies they hid. But at the arrival of Yeshua, our Messiah, this holy appointment made a lot of sense because Yeshua taught that he came to make a temporary dwelling like a tabernacle and that he was pilgriming and pleasing the eternal father for which he granted him a celestial body to his right hand and that is what his holy appointment teaches us. Yeshua's emissaries who are his apostles wrote to the new believers things that had to do with the teachings of Sukkot. In the following verses the little friends of Cielos Nuevos Niños will continue teaching us their meaning. Me, me, me. The Emissaries Tell Us Understanding of Life Shell of Tarsus Speaking of the Hope of Eternal Life wrote in his second letter to the believers in Corinthians Chapter 5, verses 1 to 4. For we know that if a tent, our earthly home, is torn down, we have a building from Elohim, a home not made with human hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. If indeed, after we have put it on, we will not be found naked. For we pray those of us who are in this tent burned, because we don't want to be unclothed, but to be clothed, so that this body that dies may be disappear for the life of an eternal body. Shaul of Tarsus is teaching that in this life, we're living in bodies that are like a sukkah, a temporary cabin that dies. We all know that we are born and grow up, but we will become adults and then we'll be old. Then we will leave this body. But even if this body doesn't remain, our soul will be clothed again with a heavenly body when Yeshua returns. The Patriarch and prophets as temporary tents. In the book written to the Hebrews, chapter 11, there is a list of biblical characters who lived their temporal life, waiting to receive a great promise from the Eternal 
in the future. This is called having faith, believing, trusting, and faithfully waiting for something promised by the Eternal that He will fulfill. And this book to the Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 8 to 10, it says that Abraham obeyed the Eternal and was on a pilgrimage in his life because he didn't receive a physical land as an inheritance, but he lived as a pilgrim and foreigner where he lived as well as Isaac and Jacob. But in verse 10, it says that they expected a city built by the eternal, a heavenly one. Yeshua's promise of a dwelling in heaven. Yeshua taught his students that this life would be a test, and by obeying the eternal, we will live differently from other people. How to walk contrary to where people go, but Yeshua also says that a dwelling awaits us with the eternal in the heavens. This is how we read in John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. Do not worry, thinking sad. If you believe in me, where my father lives, there are many habitants. This is true, because if it were not, I would have told you myself. But I have to go to prepare that place for them. When I come back, I will take them so that we can be together with the Father. Yeshua tells us how we will be in those dwellings. The good news of Mark chapter 12 verse 25 says that the day Yeshua returns and is the resurrection, then we will no longer be like people in these dwellings of bodies, but instead a celestial dwelling like the angels of the heavens. We read, For when they raise up from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heavens, celestial beings. Yes, Yossi, now I'm remembering the meaning of Sukkot. That's great, Sharon. Tell us what you can remember. We are listening to you. First of all, I remember that the Israelites have been a teaching for us. Just as in Pesach, they announced the Lamp of Freedom and its departure from Egypt. And as the Unleavened Bread, they teach us that Yeshua, our Lamb, was the one who freed us and washed us from all yeast. In this way, each festivity has a teaching for us. The Eternal has taught us in Sukkot that we are like the Israelites. Once we leave Egypt, which is the world, we are pilgrims on this earth as if it were a desert full of dangers. But even though we are fragile tabernacles, the Eternal guides us with His holy presence, like the pillar of fire and the cloud that guided the Israelites. We also learn that our body or life being a temporary tabernacle, because we wait for the Heavenly One, which is eternal, should not live for the flesh nor making treasures in this life. Instead, we should live supported by what the Father decides we have, because the people of the world live for themselves, taking more care of their body and acquiring many things. Yeshua said that the believers in Him go through a path and a narrow door. It also means that it's difficult and only a few of us go. Therefore, we should not live a light life without the afflictions of this world. And the greatest thing you'll see is that once we finish our pilgrimage, that is, this temporary life, the Eternal Father through Yeshua will give us a new celestial and eternal body in the heavens, just as the Israelites expected a promised land. In Yeshua's new covenant, we have new and better promises. Super good, Sharon. You remember it very well. Many people have become accustomed to this life and temporal things, but they cannot understand the heavenly things. 
Listen to what Shaul of Tarsus says about our new nature that we expect as Yeshua said. Shaul of Tarsus reveals to us the day of our transformation. Adam, the first man, is from the earth, earthly. The second man is Yeshua. He is from the heavens. As the earthly one, such are also the earthly ones. And as the heavenly one, so are the heavenly ones. And just as we have brought the image of the earthly, we will also bring the image of the heavenly. But this I say, brothers, that the body of flesh and blood cannot receive the kingdom of the eternal, nor what can be decomposed, receive what never decomposes. I am going to tell you a secret. Not all of us are going to die, but we will all be transformed in an instant, and Yeshua's return at the sound of the final shofar, because the final shofar will be blown, and the dead will be resurrected incorruptible, and we will be transformed into celestial ones, because it's necessary for this that is destroyed to become indestructible, and this mortal body be clothed of immortality. Yossi, now I remember the importance of Sukkot, our tabernacle, where we celebrate the Eternal during these seven days of Sukkot, should therefore represent us, as each one of us is. Me, me, me. What excitement, Sharon! During these days of Sukkot, when we'll be inside of our Sukkah, let's keep thinking about how our temporary life is, that is very fragile, but that the Eternal Father takes care and feeds us. The world is very dangerous because there are things as bad as the poison of snakes and scorpions or like the radiant sun or the threatening cold. But the Eternal Father guards our daily lives and He has given us His instruction and His holy presence so we can be guided in the truth and walk in the light. What did you think about this Talmudic of Yeshua? Is it your first time celebrating Sukkot or have you celebrated before? We invite you to send us your photos or videos so that you can share how you celebrate the Eternal with your Sukkah. Also, you can participate by doing a model of a Sukkah, thinking about the necessary things of a temporary life and fill it with many fruits, thinking that this represents the obedience and service that the Eternal Father wants from you. Little friends, as students, you will want to learn more and more in these days of Sukkot. So don't miss our deliveries every day of Sukkot, where we will be thinking about the teachings of this festivity for each one of us. Me! We will greet each other on the second day of Sukkot, May you have a blessed beginning of Sukkot for the Eternal Father. Hak Sameach Sukkot! Oh, 
Little friends, remember to visit the website of Cielos Nuevos y Tierra Nueva in the section Niños, www.cielosnuevosytierranueva.org, and download all of our free material. We also have a WhatsApp and Telegram number, plus 52, 33, 28, 24, 91, 85, where you can send your photos and videos and share with all of the time of day how you constructed your suka or how you made a model. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Cielos Nuevos Niños. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, YouTube slash Cielos Nuevos Niños. And let's keep learning about the Eternal Father's instruction. In the next teaching, Sukkot Day 2 the 16th day of the seventh month. Little friends, we will see you in the next teaching on the second day of Sukkot, the festivity of the tabernacles and dwelling in them. Shalom!